Welcome to our training on privacy vetting. My name is Juliana Cotto and I'm a policy fellow for the Youth and Education Privacy at the Future of Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module are to one, understand the responsibilities teachers and school officials have in adopting ed tech platforms, products, and services. Two, to understand the process of vetting new technology, also known as evaluating or assessing. And lastly, to understand how federal student privacy laws, FERPA and COPPA, apply to ed tech adoption. First, let's reflect on why is vetting apps, platforms, services, or products necessary or important? Educational technology tools continue to be extremely useful when it comes to measuring student engagement and performance, identifying support areas for students, communicating with families, and a ton of other reasons. But when adopting any new technology, especially when it comes to when student data is involved, there are risks involved. We go through the different risks of student privacy in our module, Why I Protect Student Privacy, which will be listed in our resource section. But one of those risks is legal, specifically FERPA, Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, and COPPA, Children's Online Privacy Protection Rule. If these laws are violated, the school can get into trouble and face investigation or even loss of federal funding. So before adopting any new educational technology, so tool, app, product, et cetera, first see if your school or district has a policy for when you want to use a new tool with your students. If there's a process in place for vetting these new tools for privacy, security, and alignment with pedagogy. And lastly, see if your school or district maintains a list of already approved or vetted ed tech products that you can safely adopt. It is crucial to ask before you app. It's unlikely that schools or districts have authorized individual teachers to autonomously select and use ed tech apps or sites without additional review and approval. So try to identify who in your school or district has this authority. Review to see if this new app or service you would like to use has maybe already been evaluated or approved. And if it is approved, does your district or school have a contract with them? If it's not been approved, it will most likely require a contract or at least reviewed by an administrator. Most schools or districts will have processes and systems in place to vet apps and services, but some are just beginning this work or simply do not have the capacity yet. We highly recommend your school or district conduct the vetting process, but if necessary, there are resources available to help you through the process of evaluating an app for privacy and security. Remember, there are those legal obligations, FERPA and COPPA, that you'll have to vet for. So what you need to know about FERPA is that whenever you share student information, so when signing up for a new tool that your students will be using, schools must either get parental consent or adhere to special privacy requirements in order to fit into the school official exception. Data cannot be shared with just anyone. Parental consent is not always ideal as it may be quite burdensome to get parental consent from all your students for every ed tool and app used in the classroom. So therefore, you must adhere to specific privacy requirements in order to qualify for the school official exception. So to qualify for the exception, the company you want to use must be doing something that the school would use internal staff for if it had enough money and resources. The company has a legitimate educational interest. The company has to be under the direct control of the school and the data that's collected can only be collected, used and shared for the original purpose that it was collected for. In addition to complying with FERPA, you must also be aware of COPPA. COPPA regulates websites and online apps that collect information from children under the age of 13. Schools can provide consent to use these tools instead of the parent, but you must ensure that any student information collected is used solely for educational purposes, not for commercial purposes, such as selling merchandise or for advertising. In addition to FERPA and COPPA, when vetting educational tools, there are also specific commitments you should look for. 
In addition to FERPA and COPPA, when vetting educational tools, there are also specific commitments you should look for. So specifically, you want to see that the company tool service commits to not sharing student information other than what is needed to provide that product or service, not sell any student personal information for any reason, not using any student information for behavioral targeting of advertisements, not to build a personal profile of a student other than for that approved educational purpose, not make any changes to its privacy policy without first providing advance notice, and not knowingly retain student and personal information beyond the required time period. Here are other commitments you should also look for. You wanna see that the company commits to disclosing clearly what is all the different types of student personal information they're collecting and how will it be used and shared. You wanna see that it supports access to and correction of student personally identifiable information by the student or their authorized parent. You wanna see the company maintain a comprehensive security program. Any company vendors that are being used you wanna see that they commit to being obligated to these same commitments we have listed here. And finally, that a successor entity is subject to these same commitments as well. Here we have some useful vetting resources to also aid you through the process. So first, the US Department of Education has a terms of service checklist with what you want to see in a tools policies and what you don't wanna see should not be included and therefore should be avoided. Common Sense Media actually evaluates the privacy policies of a large number of different apps and services and rates these apps with a score, as you can see with pass, warning, or fail. Connect Safely and Us, the Future Privacy Forum, created an educator's guide to student data privacy that includes helpful tips and questions to ask when vetting apps. For example, one good tip is to look for this triangle eye symbol. This means that that service or app allows behavioral targeting and therefore is never acceptable for school use. Lastly is a student privacy pledge by Future Privacy Forum. This pledge is a set of commitments, essentially identical to the commitments we've introduced here that companies have signed on to upholding. And currently there are 434 signatories. Here is a slightly adapted flowchart to help guide your decision in adopting a new tool and app that we're gonna go through. This was provided by Ventura County Office of Education. So let's run through the flowchart. It starts with finding a great age appropriate educational app. And the first question is to ask is, can I use it? Is it safe? As we run through these questions, note the answers will most likely be found in the terms of service or privacy policies of that app or service. So that first question to ask is, does this app collect personal student information? So personal student information is any information that can be traced back to an individual student. Most likely that answer is yes, and therefore proceed on to the next question. But if that company says no, still proceed with caution and continue to analyze their terms of service policies. Some apps say they do not collect student personal information, but they may still collect other information that can be traced back to individual students. So that next question is, is that personal information publicly displayed? So for example, are student email addresses listed on a website forum page? If any personal information is displayed publicly, you must stop, refer to your district or school policy, and think about if parental consent is appropriate. If personal information is not displayed publicly, we move on to the next question. Can the app use the personal information for anything other than an educational purpose? So think back again to those commercial purposes such as selling merchandise or behavioral advertising. If the answer is yes, and it does use personal information for non-educational purposes, you must stop and refer to your district or school policy. Consider not using the app and parental consent is required here. If the app only uses personal information for educational purposes, continue on to the next question. Is the app provider allowed to sell or share personal information? 
If the app is allowed to sell or share, again, you must stop, refer to district or school policy, and think about if parental consent is appropriate. If the app does not sell or share, you move on to the next question. And that is, can the app use personal information for targeting or behavioral advertising? And that last question is, can the app use the personal information for targeted or behavioral advertising? If yes, refer to district or school policy and think about parental consent. If no, then we've checked for obvious red flags in this flowchart, but again, that doesn't necessarily mean it's safe. Go through a district vetting process if at all possible, and if not, be sure to go back to those commitments we've shared and check for those commitments. For this first activity, we'd like you to select an app that's been rated on common sense privacy evaluations. First, review the privacy policies of that app on your own and decide, would you adopt this educational tool or not? How does it measure up in the vetting process? After, compare your findings with the common sense rating. For the second activity, search online for the name of an education app you use with your students combined with the words student privacy or data breach. Did you find anything that surprised you? Thank you for joining this training.